Tinubu signs 28.7 trillion 2024 appropriation bill into law. And Governor Bagger urges dialogue to end plateau killings. We'll also have of the press where we'll review the headlines on our daily newspapers and uh, that's how our program is going to be. It will follow, uh, all this will follow the top trending issues that we have on uh, our plate this morning. By the way, good morning and welcome to the program. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paulson. Good morning. We are already in the second day in 2024 and all the people that I've heard talking when they want to say the dates, they're mistaking it for 2023. You don't want to leave 2023? I have left 2023. I've made that mistake as yeah. well. Oh, really? Yeah. You don't want to leave 2023? Well, it want was to leave so good for you. No, it was really good for me, mm -hmm. one. But then I think it's just your mind space. Like, mm -hmm. you've been saying 2023 for like 365 days. Mm -hmm. How do you just move to 2024? So it takes a while for it to like for you to get used to it. Mm. I was um, sending out voice notes to all of my friends, like my loved ones, um, just to thank them for being a part of my 2023. And then I'm still saying, oh, in this year 2023, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, 2024. <laughs> so yes, it kind it kind of like you, you need to find that synergy into 2024. You have to ease into it, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's like everything else. You think uh, you can't wait to leave it, and then when you leave it, you start to miss it uh, unconsciously. Oh, no, it's I'm, like, I don't miss it's it. Like when I'm happy saying, to move on. Yeah, you're happy to move on, but you're still remembering it. <laughs> Not you know, remembering, of talking but just about making a mistake. Somehow in your subconscious, you're like, you're still in 2023. <laughs> okay. It's like when you're leaving secondary school, I can't wait to leave, and you leave it and sometimes you miss it you enter into the tertiary institution you can't wait to leave this university mm -hmm. when you leave it sometimes you miss it yeah in spite of all the problems and the assignments and yeah. the tests and all that i mean when you're circling back into nigeria i've heard people say oh i miss good luck's administration Oh, I miss Yaradra's administration. Oh, I miss Obasanjo's administration. Even oh, Buhari. I miss Buhari's <laughs> administration as well. So uh, it, it's always like when you're there, maybe you don't really value um, where you're at. And then when you leave, you're like, oh, I, I miss it. So I think that happens a lot. A lot yeah, well, but we should realize, like the Bible says, you shouldn't always say that the, oh, the, days, former things. the former days were better. Because whatever experience you had in the former days that made those days good, Whatever experience you're having now, you're adding to that one. So you're right. a little better than that. The good ones and the bad ones, they balance themselves out. True. So today I mean, that's, is always, that's yin, yin yang. Yeah, today is really a wonderful day. It, today is always a wonderful day. Someone said, I was watching a movie a long time ago, and uh, one of the characters, it was a, an animated movie, okay. um, uh, Kung Fu Panda. Oh, Kung Fu. And, I love that. I love Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> and uh, the, the tortoise, Hugwe, yeah. uh, said that um, yesterday is uh, gone, mm -hmm. yeah, tomorrow is uh, uncertain, mm -hmm. today is uh, the present. Uh, That's what so you it's have a gift. right now. Yes. It's a gift. That's why it is called the present. So uh, today is a gift. Every today is a gift and we should treat it as much. Yeah, make the best of it. Mm. Make the best of it. Uh, make all the memories that you can. Do all that you can. For even a better tomorrow, we are not promised tomorrow, but then even if it comes, you're ensuring that today you're making the right decisions mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But yes, I mean, it's the 2nd of January. We're right into the year and we're easing straight into it. But let's take some top trending things or stories that caught our attention. Um, so our first one today is PDP slams Tinubu's New Year speech. Yeah, the People's Democratic Party has described the New Year's speech by President Bola Tinubu as a harvest of deceit, false claims and empty promises. In his New Year address to Nigerians on Monday, President Tinubu recognized the frustration Nigerians due to the removal, well, the frustrations of Nigerians due to the removal of fuel subsidy and the Naira devaluation. He declared his administration decisions in the past seven months, including the removal of the fuel subsidy, which he claimed had become an unsustainable financial burden on the country for more than four decades, were difficult but necessary ones to prevent fiscal catastrophe. 
The president, however, called on Nigerians to be patient with him, adding that his government is working towards solving all issues around the socio-economic situation through his renewed hope agenda. Reacting, PDP in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary, Debo Olugum Agba. Olugu Agba on Monday described Tinubu's speech as an uninspiring and amounts to a waste of valuable time as it did not address any of the critical issues plaguing the nation as insecurity, decayed infrastructure, commodity manufacturing and product, productive sector crushing 28% inflation rate, a continuing plunge of the Naira, alarming unemployment, excruciating poverty, and economic hardship occasioned by the reckless, ill-advised, and insensitive policies and programs. PDP publicity scribe described an unpardoned assault on the sensibility of Nigerians for Tinubu to assert that everything the president had done since assuming office on 29 May 2023 had been done in the best interest of the country. He added that Tinubu's statement further confirmed that his administration was allegedly subjecting Nigerians to hardship as a way to suppress them to surrender to totalitarianism. That's a long, that's a very big word. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. Totalitarianism. Totalitarianism. <laughs> I mean, I love it when these politicians write and they speak and they're, they're using all of these mm -hmm. all of these big, big words, words big yes. Words. Yeah, I, I used to have, all the, all the government teachers in my secondary school days used to like very, very big words. So I, I grew up thinking every politician just likes big words. Why? You speak in plain <laughs> English that I can understand. I wonder, I wonder. <laughs> Simple English will convey the message and still give you the respect that you need to have. Yeah. When somebody else uh, speaks the big grammar, at least you, you might not understand. even communicate you, as much. It's, it's, it's a, well. yeah. But anyways, um, talking about the the president's speech yesterday morning, I'm sure you watched it. Yeah, we, we were talking about we the fact about that the um, that it, it was porous in the fact that there were no timelines. Uh, everything was just mentioned in passing. Well, it was a good speech. It was well written and all that, but it was really insensitive. For instance. A massacre just happened in Plateau State, and it wasn't mentioned. Mm -hmm. He talked about insecurity, yes, but he could have just pinpointed like something that happened in mm -hmm, Plateau. Mm -hmm. Let's know that he's listening. But yeah. he didn't say anything about it. He talked about the fact that he has been going all over. It would have been a very good occasion to say the buses I promised will uh, land by so maybe this by the end the of timeline, January yes. or this. And he didn't say anything about that. Yeah. Palliatives have ended. Uh, people didn't get them. They said two or three months and all that. People didn't get them. He didn't say anything about it. Nothing. He said there was going to be a, a raise in the living wage. wage of the people. He didn't define who was going to get this raise. Was it federal? Was it state? Was, was it private sector? He didn't say anything. And he didn't tell us I the time. I think he was very careful. So his speech was quite ambiguous. So you cannot, you know, hold him to ransom on, on anything. So um, I think he was being careful not to mention certain things. So Nigerians don't say, you said this and you did not do it. Because we've had politicians In journalism and broadcasting, they say when you're not sure, don't publish. Don't say it. So if you're not sure what of what you're going to do as a president, don't say it. Don't even be president in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> How do you raise that hope? These are some of the things that he said are some of the things he was talking about during campaign. Mm -hmm. So from the time of campaign till now, now. Seven for, some, months for someone who said this was his turn, which means he has been planning this thing all his life. It's his life ambition, that's mm -hmm. what he said. He's been planning this all his life, so he still doesn't know what to do. Seven months into an administration, you should have timelines. This is going to happen this time. You, this is going to happen this time. So if I have to tighten my belt, let me know that at some point I will have to loosen mm. it and enjoy life. Well, what well, Leisho Inka said that... Um, one year after. One year after, before we can now, you know, rate his administration. And then we're still hearing things like you, we all have to still wait a little longer before things get better. I mean, pastors are prophesying on that as well. Um, 2024 leave, is quite leave, leave uns uncertain own, uh, at, at, at this point. Um, but I mean, I just wish, you know, the president had a lot more to say, a lot more to give. But then I would like to play devil's advocate on another hand. 
um, most times opposition parties, you know, sometimes they just like to poke the bear. Yeah, but what's the lie in this? Yeah. <laughs> what really is the lie? I we know. Should, we, someone said, uh, I think on our program, that um, it, 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 sometimes when opposition talk, people will say it is politics. Mm -hmm. But when you look at what they are saying, in depth, sometimes yeah. it's all true. Mm -hmm. So what we have been saying here are the same things that Olugun Agba is saying. Yes. It's porous. There are no timelines. There's nothing definite. There's nothing sensitive about... Uh, it doesn't show that the people who are... Okay, I know people are suffering. Some expressed and some unexpressed uh, hardship that you are suffering and all that. Just give small e examples. Let's know that you are in sync with whatever mm -hmm. is happening in I mean, you're in reading the room. Everyone can relate to you like a president who hears and listens and feels the pains of Nigeria. And by now, he should know that the 5% uh, discount was a failure. The 50% of the buses, sorry, right. was a failure. He should have said, we will go after these people if this thing didn't work. Or whether yeah. it is going, it has worked, and this is why maybe you didn't experience it all that. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything like that. Yeah. We're going to go into a good year, 2024. It was a 15 minute, 15 minute speech of um, maybe nothings. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's wait and see. You are the devil's advocate, right? Now. Yes, I even, always love even to play I that. have tried. I'm trying to be a, be uh, a better a, devil's a, advocate a, this year. <laughs> But the second top trending issue that caught our attention is that the CDS assures communities to be free of bandits in 2024. I hope this is not just talk as well. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, has said he will read communities that have been uh, stifled by insurgents and uh, bandits. Uh, General Musa made this declaration on uh, Channel's televisions, made an episode of The Morning a brief on Monday where he called on support or uh, called for support from the public to meet this goal and he said and I quote we are working with the state government to identify these areas this year God willing we will make sure bandits hold no community uh, members of the community will be able to leave the IDP camps and be able to go there end of quote the nation is yet to heal from a Christmas Eve attack by marauding assailants on Bokos and Barkinladi local government areas in Plateau State that left 200 people dead and hundreds more injured. Repeated attacks on the region in the space of days have left many disillusioned with the efforts of security personnel at, at tackling the growing crisis, which General Musa says collaborative efforts are the only feasible means of ending acts of terror in the region. The chief of defense staff claimed the motive behind the plan to carnage was to embarrass everyone and take the government for a fool. On the challenges the military faced in their fight against banditry, General Musa said they were of a political nature that required decision-making from the political class. General Musa also bemoaned criticisms from various quarters over the military's effect on ending the scourge of banditry. <coughs> It's cough. It's cough. <laughs> ah. Well, uh, Gerald Musa is promising us that, mm. um, you know, yesterday or so, um, the Senate was saying that we're going to invite him and other service chiefs to come and explain again and give them specific strategies and all that, how to end this thing. And then the next day, the very next day, he came out with a statement saying uh, this. Now, how do you even explain what does he mean? Maybe you should know. What does he mean when he said um, it is of a political nature? Does it mean that if it's a pol of a political nature, they cannot, cannot prevent it? They cannot do anything about it until the president says something or the National Assembly says something? I do not understand. Well, so you know we've heard of stories, um, alleged stories that even these politicians are the ones funding mm -hmm. this banditry. So it's almost like you're, we're all together, we dine together, there is not so much we can do. But then whatever is wrong is wrong. These are lives of people, humans, they're not chickens or cattle. You have to be able to protect these lives. And I, and I heard that um, they had about 20 something distress call mm -hmm. from Plateau State yeah. on, on that day. Um, 
in about how many hours? So I'm wondering. Forty-eight hours. How do they went from village yes, to village? How killing do you, how do you start to kill one hour, two hours, three hours? Then they're getting distress calls, and you don't do anything about it. So what are you doing for us, really? Why are we funding? Because. I mean, security takes a chunk of our budget. So why are we funding all of that when you're still not going to do your job? It just, it just sounds like, you know, I have seen armed robbers in a car, but I've recognized them. These armed robbers belong to politician A or mm. B, so there's nothing I can do. Otherwise, if people are in a community killing, no matter who sent them, they are not the army. It's not like the president has sent uh, the army to go and level a village because there are terrorists mm -hmm. in that village and all that. No. These people are... Innocent citizens. Innocent citizens that are being killed. And they call you and you say it's a, it has a political undertone. What kind of thing is that? Like, make it make sense to me. It doesn't make sense, <laughs> so I cannot make it make sense to you. It doesn't make sense. Why say it's a political thing? Do your job. And, okay, maybe he's afraid or he's trying to tell us that if I do my job well, he, uh, the politicians will, will, come will sack fire. me mm -hmm. or something. They will come after me and all that. I, it doesn't make sense to me. But at the end of the day, are you here to serve the politicians or are you here to, to serve, serve Nigeria? Nigerians. That is a very yeah. valid question. If you're here to serve Nigeria, that means everything that you think about, you think of Nigeria first, even before the politicians. Guess what? The politicians are Nigerians. If people went to their villages and they started to kill their people, said to kill their brothers and sisters because guess what? These people are families. Yeah. They have families. They have people who are going to mourn them. So if, if these bandits or terrorists starts to go to the politician's village, will they be happy about that? You can't now justify it and say it has a political undertone. That's the reason why we would allow. It's almost like you're promoting. Yeah, we would this. allow it because yes. it has political undertone. And that undertone. is so wrong. That is not what you're called for. Then you shouldn't serve Nigeria. The politicians were, yesterday were asking, is it, or before even yesterday, is it that they, there's no intelligence gathering by these uh, security agencies or the security people, uh, whether the army or police, is why do these people always have superior intelligence mm -hmm, than the than security apparatus that we have in and Nigeria? And my problem is the money that they put in there. And now he's asking for cooperation. I hope mm. he's not thinking about people cooperating with them because the cooperation will be that there is a problem. I give you a call. Come. That's part of the intelligence. Yeah. And you're not coming. So and you're how not do doing I anything about it. It's political undertone. <laughs> oh, well, let's take another one. All right, one, let's please. take another one. Um, allowing Nigerians to bear firearms recipe for disaster. This is coming from CAN. The Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has reacted to the recent statements made by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja regarding the issue of openly car carrying firearms in Nigeria. The, sec the Secretary of CAN and North Central Zone, Pastor Simon Dolly, in an interview with one of the national dailies in Abuja on Monday, said Dolly emphasized the importance of upholding the law and promoting peaceful means of conflict resolution. He stated that as religious leaders, it is our firm belief that bearing of arms without proper license or of the authority to do so, regardless of the circumstances, is a violation of the law and can potentially lead to the further breakdown of order and security within our nation. He also stressed that the values of tolerance, brotherliness, unity, forgiveness and cooperation in their teachings and interactions with followers as he believes they are essential for fostering a harmonious and secure society. Recognizing the complexity surrounding the issue of firearms in Nigeria, Pastor Simon Dolly called for a comprehensive approach that addresses the root causes of insecurity. He called upon leaders to prioritize initiatives that promote dialogue, understanding, and the equitable distribution of resources to address the grievances that often lead to violence and conflict. I totally agree with Khan. Uh, not everybody can be allowed to carry arms. Yes. Even now that we are not carrying arms, we know what people are doing mm -hmm. uh, with whatever they, they can lay their hands on. I agree with them. The government should do something really, really drastic about this uh, security. Mm -hmm. Where I live, and I'm not even living in Lekki, I pay security fee. Everywhere, so everywhere you that you go to, you pay security fee. And it's not just the security fee or that it, it affects. It affects um, uh, rents as well, because mm -hmm. if a, a tenant is paying that, the landlord is also paying the one for landlord, mm -hmm. and he's now putting it on the rent. Mm -hmm. And because of the security situation, 
every small street in Lagos is looking to put a gate. Yeah, yes. Once the gate that estate. street, it has become an estate. And the rents in an estate are mm -hmm. very high. So it affects everything. Rents become high. Food items become high because the people selling are maybe renting houses yes. and renting shops. And, and they all have that. to put that into consideration. So everything is tied together. Work on the security. Otherwise, going to every village in the world to look for people to come and invest in Nigeria will absolutely not work. Yeah. It I, will not work. I totally agree. And, and um, talking about firearms, I know that in the U.S. there is gun violence. You see people just move into shopping malls, even into schools, mm -hmm. and they just go on a spree and kill people. And so if we are allowing people to have firearms, you know, without licenses in, lay, in Nigeria... Even with licenses. Even with yeah. licenses. Like, I mean, you should be able to verify. Are you? Why do you need it? So we, we don't want a situation whereby everyone can easily afford a gun or a firearm because that is a disaster waiting to happen. Guess what? Anybody, I can just say, yeah, I'm cool. I don't like how you smiled at me today. Why are you looking at me? And that's it. Because I feel like I have some level of power. It mm. gives you power. Right now there. we're grappling with a drug problem. And mm -hmm. we know how these people who get high, the kind of things that they yes, do. And then you the put a gun health. in the hand of one of those. My goodness. So, I, I, well... It should never happen. It should Please. never happen. The government should protect us. The police, the army, the air force, the navy. Those are the people we are paying mm -hmm. with taxpayers' money to protect us. We shouldn't be paying for security again. Mm -hmm. And even if we are paying for security, let us be secure. Not a situation where you can't travel anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't sleep in your house. Because with, there are unknown gunmen. It, yeah, everywhere. So. <laughs> and, and, and talking about that, um, I wonder how they get them. Because... I want to believe our security agencies are the ones, you know, licensed to have these firearms. Mm -hmm. Do they sell them when they get them? There's so many questions around it because if someone can easily have a gun, I want to know how you got that gun. And I love the, I love the fact that Khan was even talking about like the root causes, mm -hmm. you know, for all of these things. Let's start to deep dive and know why this even happened in the first place. How do they get these firearms? And then we can now start to cleanse um, our well, firearms enter into the country at least every four years. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe, Contrabands. May, maybe we'll call it a conspiracy theory, but a lot of people believe that politicians provide these things yes. for their boys, mm -hmm. you know, to whatever they want to do. And after election, you cannot go back and say, give me my but, guns. You're right. So uh, you somebody, put it into yeah. circulation. So the guns are in circulation. Let's just say that's one of the, 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 the facts. Maybe not all of the politicians, not even maybe, not all the politicians, but a lot of them that see politics as a do or die affair. Mm. They do this. That's one part. Then you have others that, uh, you, you know, allow these things to go through the pots because the people who are buying can afford to pay a X, Y, Z amount right. at the port. So you smuggle and get it thing in. Smuggled in. Just like they're smuggling rice and uh, smuggling every other thing, guns yeah. are also being smuggled in. Mm -hmm. So it's... it's I know there's an agency that was um, supposed to to be inaugurated or I don't know the, the right term. I think it's called... Um, something but it's for is for things like this i think it was called nat force i don't know if um they're going to like sign that into bill and the agency start but it's to mitigate this kind type of issues like so they, they're supposed to be in like seaports and airports to ensure that firearms are not being there are enough in. enough people at the ports already give them the required um gadgets to take care of the yeah. ports Let's go digital. You can find out these things when they are coming in. Give them drones mm -hmm. so that they can, you know, go to have an aerial view. Yes. to see. You are not giving are. them these, and you are bringing another an agency, agency. that you have to still pay already, more money to. The people there are already enough. Give them what they require and make them use them. Because you go to the ports now, maybe the CCTV cameras even are not no, working okay. before you talk of other things. Because if these things work, a lot of things that go on at the ports will not go on. Yes, because so if the they're CCTV sabotaging is working. It. So make sure that they're using what you're giving them. Mm -hmm. Give them the gadgets and then make sure they're using them. That's how you... you yeah. Because you if the CCTV is working, I will be mindful to want to take bribe mm -hmm. to smuggle your goods in. right? Because I know that someone there is, someone is there to check me. So if we don't have all of these things that, that we need, then we're, we're just, just a like joke. They've killed people in a plateau state, state and you're setting up a committee to find, find what? People are dead already. What is the committee coming to do? Damage so is done. 
is not, is not bringing more agencies to our ports. Give them the right things to work. Simple as that. Yeah. Give them drones, give them other gadgets. There are things that can detect when all this metal are coming into the yeah. country. I think we had, a, we had a guest, you know, that yeah. talked so, about this as well. Well, anyway, I think we, we let's wrap it up on the top trending and take a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us. <laughs>